Talisman Saber is the largest combined exercise in the world that enables us to work with strong partners and allies to enhance our interoperability. It just helps our interoperability uh, to work together and it also increases the readiness uh, for both our forces, which is exactly what we want to achieve. It involves 7,000 Australian personnel and about 20,000 US personnel. And I'm really pleased to say that the planning for this activity has, uh, has been first class. For us here in Bonhomme Richard, we're working on principally amphibious warfare, but because we're a strike group, we're working in all the domains of warfare. So we're doing air defense, surface defense, and anti-submarine warfare. We start the planning cycle just as soon as the exercise is over. We plan the starting cycle for the next event almost immediately for the amphibious assaults in each and every individual event. Specifically, for the amphibious assault, we worked on the planning, the embarkation, the rehearsal, the movement ashore, and the actual assault. It's an air, land, and maritime environment. The scenario continues to develop, and the benefit that we achieve out of the exercise ha has continues to develop each time we do this activity. So I've known, uh, noticed a real uh, increase in the overall benefit from the last exercise. The Australians were our partners in every way. They played significant leadership roles. They also embarked teams on board the various ships. It's basically been seamless interoperability. More importantly than that is the ability to build personal relationships with counterparts, that, those valuable relationships that we may need later on. It was a real honor uh, to participate in Talisman Sabre. Uh, particularly blessed to be able to embark in Bonhomme Richard as our flagship, uh, to be able to execute the duties and responsibilities of an expeditionary strike group. The most important part of all the things that we do is maintaining that personal relationship. This crew is truly extraordinary.
red pop-ups? Yeah, this the way it's realistic and it helps, provide, helps uh, our training out is normally in the past anytime we do exercises either against targets or some event uh, having them it's a new unit uh, all their TTPs and it's a thinking force against another opposing thinking force so we gather real intelligence on each other uh, and it's really two opposing rules against each other so that makes it the most realistic training that we can well uh, as soon as we get on these helos we're going to go ahead and the uh, golf company is already ahead of us. He sees the airfield. Uh, we're going to land there in the airfield. And our objective is to put her uh, a click or, two, click or two to the east. Uh, we'll make that movement. It's two villages, so the three platoons, we have assault, support, security, uh, all meet supporting each other for this objective. Uh, and once we're there, we'll go straight to, to security ops, sort of like coin related operations. Uh, and we'll, uh, there for a week or two until we can help that legitimate government uh, regain that battle space. I mean, they've been doing well. Uh, they've been doing everything that we told them to do, everything they're trained to do. Granted, as we sit on the ship, we can get a little rusty, but uh, you know, them getting off is refreshing. They absolutely love what they do, so uh, as soon as they get their food on the deck, just everything comes back to them from all the training that we've been doing since, really since last September. So they're doing really well. They're doing everything that we expected.
team won. Hey Jaggers, we're going we're going to the intersect. You're gonna push it? Right. We're going to the intersect. Captain Patrick Joseph, P A T R I C K J O S E P H. Uh, Golf Company Commander, or, uh, yeah, Company Commander. So today's mission is uh, that the company uh, executes a mechanized assault uh, in order to establish an lodgement ashore that will allow for the uh, echeloning of further combat power, logistics assets, and things like that uh, ashore so we can continue to uh, push to follow on objectives and uh, uh, secure the area. Overall for Talisman Sabre, this represents uh, an amphibious um, landing where the Navy and the Marine Corps can partner um, and uh, keep building a, a relationship um, that uh, promotes the interoperability uh, of both services um, in addition to working with our Australian uh, brothers and sisters down here. Bilateral exercise of this magnitude uh, allows us to uh, build those relationships um, that uh, enable uh, a security posture uh, in this AO. Uh, additionally, um, going beyond security uh, for real-world uh, contingencies, whether it be humanitarian assistance, disaster relief operations, uh, we've uh, forged those relationships now so that when uh, we do have to do, do this for real, it's, uh, it's a lot easier. So um, after uh, several years of you know, um, uh, counterinsurgency fights in both Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, it's a tremendous opportunity again to work with the uh, with the Navy, um, and so that amphibious operations, which is uh, part and parcel of what it is that we provide as a Marine Corps, um, we build these core competencies back up uh, and enable them to be uh, uh, stronger um, and allow us to be more flexible in the future 
uh, when we work with the Navy. Okay. Lance Corporal Zimmerman, M Y Q U E L Z I M M E R N M A N. Michael. Yes. I'm a company radio operator. Lance Corporal Michael Zimmerman, a company radio operator with the Golf Company. Uh, we're on 31st Mew in Okinawa, Japan. I set up the uh, communications for the company. We relay it back to the battalion. Uh, when we're not doing that, I go out with the commanding officer, uh, provide communi communications uh, for him in the field, and uh, we, re we relay back to the, uh, the company COC and they head back to battalion for us. Uh, tracks, uh, amphibious assault vehicles, they uh, bring us from the ship to land uh, in, in case we need to raid a beach or anything like that. Uh, they have the capability uh, taking us into towns, transporting us uh, wherever we need to go. Uh, very reliable vehicles. And, uh, yeah. Uh, round zero 02, we headed off the ship, assaulted the beach. Uh, once we got to the beach, we uh, pushed through the, the jungle uh, and we secured uh, the objective two, which was an LZ. Uh, as Marines, we're known to be, uh, we're known to be amphibious uh, in case we need to assault any beaches anytime soon. I mean, it's really good to get back to those roots. I mean, as, as Marines, we're supposed to be the, the, country ni the country's 911 force. Uh, we need to be ready for anything. I mean, we've been known in the past to uh, just take over countries from the, from the sea, and we just assault through the land, so we really need to be preparing for something like that. History usually repeats itself, so. Being out here in Australia for Talisman Sabre, it's a, it's a really different environment. Uh, we really don't train back in Pendleton or uh, Okinawa in an environment like this. You've got, you've got jungle, you've got desert, it's all in one place. It's a, really good, uh, it's a really good place to get all that training. It's like going to 29 Palms and being in Okinawa at the same time. Did we get a 
on the bloods? Did we order a cross match? No, we didn't do a cross match on the bloods. Okay, so we've are we going to cross match bloods? We're waiting for those to arrive. So, so we have own cross match blood in round. We've got two units in. of own cross match blood. Michelle. Michelle. This is uh, transfusion. Okay. So, uh, where's Adrian? Adrian. Notionally, fight one unit. Go ahead and start. Yeah, 